Hey everybody, well, you guys have been asking for this one for a while. Uh, it's not a very long video, but nevertheless a very important one. And we're going to be talking about how you can animate objects that are already constrained to other objects, right? Sounds a bit complicated, but we're going to use locators. And once you check out the video, make sure you watch it in full. You'll understand completely, All right? Here we go. Okay guys, well we're going to do something very very different today. We're going to talk about uh, how you can animate a constrained object and we're going to do that using locators. Well, how does that work? Well, let's say you have a, a vehicle, maybe a car or whatnot, and you have a character in that car jumping up and down while the car is moving. Now, uh, it's no problem animating the car, uh, but when you want to animate the, uh, the character or whatnot, it's really constrained to the car, it's going to be a difficult situation. So what we do instead is we use locators, and that's what I wanted to talk about. Yo uh, locators are used all the time in animation, for example, to constrain a ball to a character's hand, maybe pick up a book from a table and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to keep it extremely simple so you guys uh, understand exactly what's going on and I'll uh, walk you through it, right? Okay, so first we're going to create an object and we're going to call that a car, right? And I'm not going to model a car, no worries, but just so you have an understanding of what's going on here, we'll make something, right? And I won't spend too much time on that, just so you remember what the difference is between the two objects, right? Okay, so we'll move this back. Control D to duplicate, move that over, take both Control D and move that over. Okay, that's our car. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, we're gonna select the whole thing. We're gonna go to uh, my modeling menu. We're gonna go to mesh and combine, edit, delete by type, history and modify freeze transformations and modify reset transformations. Okay, that's our car. All right, so now we need uh, something or somebody or whatever to jump up and down while sitting in the car, all right? Let's find a little character for that. We'll take this sphere right here. Okay, and most important thing here is that you understand the principle of what you can do with this, right? Okay, so we got that. Now let's focus on moving the car first. So I'm gonna take the car and I'm gonna make sure I'm scrubbed to, um, frame one in my animation, hit S to keyframe that, and then I'm going to move forward to let's say frame 50, I'm going to hit W, move this forward, and then um, hit E to kind of rotate that a little bit, and then hit W, move it this way. So it will kind of look like a sliding motion, like it's uh, a curve sliding on ice uh, when it goes through a curve, right? Okay guys, well it's time for a little sponsor break here. And without them I can make any of these videos for you guys, so show them some love, right? And you actually might love this one. So if you need 3D models for a lifelike visualization that you're working on, you might want to check out Render People. They offer 3D posed, 3D rigged, and even 3D animated people models, right? And they have over 3,000 products right now. They cover uh, models suitable for business, shopping, sports, swimwear, evening wear, outdoor, and even specialty models like doctors, workers, and whatnot, right? So uh, they're high resolution, 8K maps, clean UVs, clean meshes, ready to go in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Blender, and Rhino. Now, if you guys use the link below, you'll not only help out my channel at no extra cost to you, but you'll also get free models, totally free models that are posed, rigged, and animated. Okay, so we're going to hit S on that to keyframe that as well. We're going to jump back to frame one. Let's look at it and see what it looks like. Hit play. And there we go. All right. Okay, so we have that. Now, what we need to do here is we need to create a locator. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go to uh, create. We're going to go to locator. And I'm going to move that up. And I'll hit R and I'll scale it up so you can see what's going on. We've got this little green arm sticking out and I position that just inside that uh, sphere okay all right 
So now if we go and hit play, you'll see that that thing will just stay right there. Has no relation to the sphere just yet. It's just in the same place, that's all. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna select my car and I'm gonna shift select my locator. And then I'm gonna go up to the animation menu and I'm gonna go up to uh, constrain parent option box. Let's go to edit and reset settings. So we're all on the same page here. There we go. And we have translation in all uh, axes. We have rotation in all axes. And you can change that if you want or not, but we're good. So I'm gonna hit add, all right? So now when I hit play, you'll see that the car will move and so will the locator. Okay, so hit play, there you go. And you can see that's following along. All right, so far so good. Let's hit stop, let's jump back. Now, what I want is for the ball to follow the car with the locator, all right? So very simple, select the ball, shift to select the locator. And there you go. And I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard to parent the two. And it says down here that it's now the case. We're on frame one, we're gonna hit play to play that. And there you have it. Now, you're probably gonna say, well, what's the big deal? Why not just, um, you know, parent that ball to the car? Well, the thing is we want to animate the ball, right? So it bounces up and down while it's sitting in the car. That's the whole point of the locator. So in order for us to do that, we can now go in and select our ball and we're on frame one, right? We're gonna keyframe that. So it has to keyframe. We're gonna scrub forward to, I don't know, let's say frame 10 or so, and we're gonna move that up. And we're gonna as to keyframe that, we'll scrub to 20. We'll uh, move it down again. We'll hit as to keyframe that, we'll move it to 30. Move it up as to keyframe, move it to 40. Move it down as to keyframe. You get the idea, right? Okay, so we're going to jump back to frame one and let's hit play and let's see if that worked out or not. Okay, here we go. And there you have it, guys. So that is all there's to it. It's not that hard. Um, just to recap what we did here. So we took the car, we animated the car, okay? Then we created the locator and we... Um, uh, constrained the locator to the car. So whatever at that point is then linked to that locator will follow the locator that will follow the car. And that will allow you to do an individual animation on the sphere. Now you can do this, like I said, for let's say objects following a character's hand, uh, but especially when you're modeling stuff that is more mechanical, let's say cranes, uh, rotating gears, moving buckets, chain links, all that kind of stuff. You can do basically the same thing with that, right? So that's all about that. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please do so you don't miss out on future videos and a lot more stuff coming. So check that out, right? Well, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.